let me explain like this very easy for you. See, when you're on top of all of this and you're looking into it, it only looks like one thing, duality. So the story mm -hmm. of what exact the dual, what exact dualism going? Because I can, like I said, we can go to Rama, and we can go to Shiva, and we can go to Ket Ketsiopakli. Okay, we could go to other cultures and find stories that are even more enigmatic than what the Moors were talking about, which was basically mm -hmm. half baked from what the Kemetans were really saying. Because it doesn't like I can't I can't go to sources. This is just this is how it is like a flashlight. The further you shine it out, the dimmer it's going to be. So why not go right back to the source? <laughs> because because yeah, like because like like what the dimness is, is the uh, the lies. OK, it's called real lies. This means that someone else said something based on something someone else told them, never realizing that the first person who started saying that was not telling the truth because they couldn't see the truth. See, what does it take to see the truth? And what happens to people who see the truth? They don't carry on with swords. They don't carry on a certain way. If people would see the truth, they would know that already. So you see how the truth locks everything. It, it guards itself. It lets the person wander around this wilderness of duality. A world with, like I said, look it up, a Yoda bite to understand how big that is. That's about... I don't know, a large amount, okay? So this is, what I'm saying is, is there's so many stories and so much division, it only really equals one thing. That's why I tell you, are you in or are you out? Yeah, you need to go back to the root. Well, if you're in, you're in duality. If you're out, you're in totality. I didn't say one was better than the other. I didn't say one was good or bad. But you need to know, when you look into all that stuff, that you've got to have this ejector seat, that basically once you close the book, of course, I'm not saying don't read it. But what I'm saying is, is that don't put yourself in that story. Observe. Be the observer. And because there's a lot deeper metaphors into certain things. Because first of all, like with the Moors, and especially Morocco, that pentagram is more central to everything that's going on. Any real adept that knows what that symbol means and knows what those colors mean already know the entire story. So it's also very simple to understand that Europa and Europe are in connection with each other, meaning that that's the action, they're all the same names. Even the, the Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower, all this is one craft of individuals that have practiced a certain type of magic using the Hartman grid to practice on one another stuff that's just entangling and twining and, and now it's just being reinvented by the ones who usurped it from Egypt. You see what I mean? So it's just the same thing. Building bodies, that's the more graduated version. You can build bodies to get other people into those incarnations. That's kind of what we're experiencing. It's like a greater level of the, uh, of the quest. I won't demonize it and call it the deception. But realistically, when you get inside of a body, you automatically go to duality. The whole rig is on this dualist. That's the only way you can even see this plane. And so from that point, now you, you're, you're a dueler now. And to, get, to be able to escape that hatch is really what, what you're looking for. And that's why I was saying in the beginning of this conversation, there's some that can be in and out. It takes a very graduated being. We can explain it. You know, and it also becomes a suture to when you're working your way from untwining from the webs that have entangled around your emotions. You see what I mean? Because we all need purpose for a while. We all need to be pulling fuel from something. We need to feel synergistic or energetic with something. So when you remove that from an individual, you have to also be very cautious. You can't just go and tell everyone, look, the Moors were, you know, this, 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 and you know that that's their central theme. You, you know, you better be ready to maybe fight in there. So what happens is with all of this, though, is that the Deb says, oh, are we talking about duality? Because if we are, then, you know, we are agreeing to plunge in. And then when you plunge in, you know the truth. The pentagram is then the HUD, fire versus wood versus water, the four points, and then the world's being divided, the, ter the territory of the world's being divided amongst the fallen ones, meaning the harmonics, those who bound themselves on the Mount Harmon, the archon, which is the degrees of a 360-degree circle, which is a pentagram. It is a replication of five which the world which the uh the organic produces so in every tense a false world and this is the word falsophorus 
who was Lucifer. So it's very interesting how it all starts rolling out, though, because people need to understand that. It's because they, they can't go into fear, like, oh, my goodness, Lucifer's running around. No, 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 no. It's none of this is external. The actual template you're in, this phi-based body, but the way it's been rigged can be manipulated to be a Luciferian or a Jehovian type structure and a fair measure of one or the other. Because what are those really saying? Fire and water. So instead of getting like the microcosmic story, what I'm saying, like just somebody's story of what was going on in their particular tribe, it's better to uh, go to another scope. Because each of those people, they were that, that man was also a woman. He doesn't, most men don't know that. They, they have incarnations of when they were women. There's a preliminary cycle within the animalistic beings that are on the planet. This is the, the lion, the snake, these, the bear, the flora and the fauna that the being is actually being cultivated around before it comes into a human body. So do you see there's other dynamics that just go unseen when someone's just talking about, you know, what my rights are and, you know, inside of a system that, you know, I don't, it can't be acknowledged. Your sovereign doesn't acknowledge it. And that's how they end up, if you've ever been a, a slave, especially to any kind of demagogic tradition or just to the subservience uh, side of your own consciousness, then this is what creates a free person or what I like to just call as a sovereign. So that, that's, that's the scope of it, brother. And, you know, I'm bringing it to you like this because I have a lot of, of care and compassion for the brothers that have been tuning into the message and the sisters that have been tuning into the message because we got progress to make. And so any time, like if you listen to two years ago, three years ago, there's a lot of knowledge in there, but there's also a vital piece missing as I'm making my way through the devocanic planes, zigzagging up my body in duality, mantra and tantra. Okay, this is the yoga and tantra, the left and the right side of the body. As I'm trying to basically figure out, and every bit trying, because I'm, try I'm using left brain, right brain, center state of conscious, trying to figure out what's going on. And, and this is a real thing for me, and the cameras and the recorders just so happen to be on. So that, and that's how we agreed to come into this, because I wasn't going to sacrifice my own consciousness to be up on some radio somewhere and talking to some people about something and getting a couple dollars when I already came from a world where that kind of stuff was easy to do. So this is, this is what it is. And I've seen this, like, remember, because if you really want to talk about it, there's been continuations of the knowledge that was presented by the Moors, especially within the Nuwabian tradition. But it did lead to certain things. If someone actually did the real investigation and said, well, what was the end all finish all of it? It was the evocation and intonation of certain entities that <laughs> from basically the, what's happened every single time, they don't seem to be mesh well with the human being. And I would say that that's easy. They, they burn with fire. Okay, let me just explain it very simply because this is an important thing. This is a big question that's going to answer many people's questions today. This is what Kundalini is. When, if you don't know how to work your water principle, you start burning with fire. This first starts as a passion, right? You got a lot of passion, a lot of will. Then it seems to get a sexual nature to it. Then that sexual nature then deviates if not burnt, if, it, if not doused out not you're not putting out your fire but you need to contain your fire and so again then the person will deviate and then they generally blend their sexes then and this is what you see going on in in the industry especially when they invert the kundalini then the sexes are blend so the person is basically an external androgenin which is baphomet and it's because you, you externalize kundalini. If you internalize kundalini, the two nadis, the fire and the water, actually figure out the balance and they both move up the spine and down the spine. And these are just the energetic centers, whatever a person wants to call them, snakes or not. And then why there is so much uh, bad press on it, kundalini, serpents, etc., is for obvious reasons. Once you amplify your energy, if the person doesn't stay in balance, look out. And this is what you're seeing in the industry. That's why there's so much talent there. Like you get folks remembering lines and acting with four or five movies. And there's some real talent there. You can't deny it. But that talent is from degrees of the fire to beings that don't even understand the water principle much. And the water principle is, of course, when's the last time that you actually cried? 
This is how you'll notice if the organism is getting itself too deep into a fire shell, which is a seed. A seed is a fire shell. And so they, can, they won't cry and they're kind of impenetrable to anything that has to do with real compassion. Now they have this fire seed, but somebody's got to make it rain. And you got to put some water on it. And so that's where the lunar cycles and things like that, the height of the full moon, those kind of uh, the cold water, the cold salt water, all those kind of principles putting it's just alchemical. You, alchemical. you could douse the body with cold salt water and let it lay in that even much as it hates it. A Kundalini activated body doesn't like cold water. But what you're doing then is just like you're putting the uranium fuel rods into the cold water so that they can cool down before you go Fukushima on these folks. Because remember, when you're, when you're also practicing energy principles, that's the soul, right? And then that's also connected with the body. But what are you putting in your mind? <laughs> because if you put it in one of these, you know, the, you're talking about a Hashashin dueler? Like the Moorish Empire for what it really was from Ben Saba, the son of seven? I mean, <laughs> what kind of research? I would, you know, I would have to dive through the whole thing because the lure is rich. It's just as thick as it, it's just as thick and as embroidered as the most expensive Persian rug. This culture, but every single turn is yet another deeper path down on the zigzag of the matrixes that are built and still running and still under control by Sol Tan. So that's why I was saying, see, now we got this point where we can be so innovative, we could do like a quantum leap, boom, and leave a sonic boom and a couple other boom, boom. And then bring a whole new world where it just shines like a light, like what the original, uh, 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 the original pyramids looked like a light in the distance. You're like, man, we got to get there. What is that? That's the city that you probably projected with your mind once you escape the catacombs in the nether worlds. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's, but don't mistake this as something else because it's two. It's the, it's the devocanic planes that works on duality. All the bodies are built symmetrically with one interchanging principle in the center that barely functions most of the time. So see it as it is. And then if you want to progress further within this, understand you're, you're in. You're in. But if you're out, then that means to desist from all this and to start really loading. It's an illusion, which it is. And then that way, clearing up your path so that when you pass out of this body, then there's nothing that that's going to thrust you back into the incarnation because you want to do something over again.